here I have some Sumi-E gold mica based watercolor paint and I have a broad brush, one that I don't mind scrubbing around on my paper too much. And this is cold press, so that means it has kind of a tooth to it. It's a little bit rough. So I get some on my brush and then I kind of wipe off some of the moisture so that it's dry brush. And then you know, I've got to wipe off even more. I don't actually want too much on it. And I just sort of let the bristles skim over the surface of my paper. And this produces a very mottled gold texture that's just on the top surface of the paper. It's hard to see it in video and in photos, but you can get a sense of it over there. You see all, all the sparkly over here. This area is from the dry brush that I just did now. So I'm going to do that in a few other areas. That helps to feather out the golden textury stuff that I've got going so that it's not so obviously from the patches of gold leaf. This way it sort of distributes it out in this randomized little speckly pattern area. Lots of shiny. I'm also going to use some of this in a little bit more concentrated and liquid form over here because I want to make it look like this bark texture stuff continues in gold. You see how I have this patch. It kind of stands out too much, this, these few patches. So by painting in with this, I can create a sort of dissolving bark texture pattern in gold so that it integrates more into the painting. Some places I don't mind when it stands out. Like I don't mind this stuff over here, but right over here it's a little bit jarring on the bark. That's why I'm doing this. There we go. Now I'm going to add a few spindly branches, twigs really, coming off the edges. And as these come in towards the central branches and trunk, I try to make them match the color tone. So it's not like these little twiggy things are just stuck on here, but more that they emerge from these branches and the points where they're connected to. Getting a little bit more greenish tones, especially over here on the edge, since I have much more of a yellowy greenish background area. And in fact, I think I'm going to lighten my concentration here a bit more because it's standing out too much. I want it to 
sort of just fade into the surrounding areas. So let's grab some bit of yellow into my mixture. You see my palette looks like a pretty muddled mix of colors right now. That's what happens with me. <laughs> I always end up with a lot of neutral tones in my palette, but it's kind of fun and you get some really nice subtle neutral shades this way. I'm all for purity of color tone in the re really bright central areas of my paintings, but in the background I like these muted neutrals that are the results of mixtures of random colors just in the corners and little places and the edges of my palette. Yeah, this is better. See, this this now is a little bit more of a subtle, lighter green rather than the really dark gray purple tones that I had earlier. And so that works much better for blending out into the periphery. Uh, let's do a little bit on that side also. Now this side is a little bit more purpley. So I'm going to try to bring in some more bluish purple tones instead for this side. You can see my mixtures here. This was the green that I was using over there and this is more the lavender bluish color that I'm going to use on this side. I think that's still too dark. I'm gonna give it a little bit more of a pink punch and dilute it down. Blend some of this stuff out a little bit because that was a little bit too dark, I think. Little bits. All right, there we go. And now, I think emphasizing the ground a little bit more over here because I don't really get a sense of my ground yet. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this dark shadow area because I'm thinking I'm going to stick some kind of focus into the painting here depending on what it is. This is utilizing the cold press again. I'm just letting my brush skip across the surface. I'm actually painting with the side of this thin little brush and that gives me some surface skipping. I'm going to use a older brush for that even so I can do more scrubby type of action. And that gets me the same kind of thing that happened with the gold paint earlier where I was just letting the, the pigment skim over the surface and, and that gives me textury goodness without having to work too hard for it. You can actually hear my brush scraping on the paper here. <laughs> 